And our third person is Valerie Yahoo, and since she's her, her project was oral history, I'll let her do the, the the questions and the answers. Valerie. Okay. Um, my name is Valerie Yaza, and I'm going to talk about um, just a little introduction for the researchers on where I was born and my parents, siblings' early years. Um, I was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My parents live in the Gallup, New Mexico area. Um, I grew up in Albuquerque, went to elementary, middle school, and high school in Albuquerque. I am the oldest of three. Um, I have a younger brother and a younger sister. Um, and as far as high school activities, I was um, I've been involved in, I was involved in orchestra since I was in um, fourth grade and up to high school. And then I was on cross country and track um, also while I was in high school and member of Italian club and cougar corps and that was about it. <laughs> um, How'd your, how did the team do, the track team? Um, we were pretty good. We weren't um, the best, but we were good. Got to some special meets then, right? Statewide? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and for college, higher ed, um, I went to undergrad at Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado. Um, Tell us a little bit about that when going there. Okay. Um, it was the first time that I'd been away from home, so it was my first experience being away from Albuquerque and being out in New Mexico. Um, I was involved with Let's see, I guess, I, I thought I was going to major in computer science when I went there, but I ended up majoring in English after taking a British literature class with one of the professors, um, so that pretty much made me an English major. And the organization I was most involved with was with the International English um, Honor Society, which is Sigma Tau Delta. Um, I served as Secretary, Vice President, and President, finally, um, at the end. Okay. Um, and then from undergrad, I graduated and went back home to Albuquerque for about a year and a half while I took a break and tried to figure out what grad school I wanted to go to because I had considered going back for an MFA um, for a master's in, um, well, actually, for a master's in creative writing is what I would have got. Um, but then I ended up choosing librarianship because my mother was a um, library technician at Sandia National Laboratories, so she kept pushing me into going to a library science program. So when I finally applied to programs, I applied to um, Kent State University, University of Texas at Austin, and where was the other one? Those were my only two. But I ended up at Kent State University in Kent, Ohio. Okay. Damn. Um, so from there, I went to Kent State University all the way to Ohio, which was the furthest I had ever lived from home. <laughs> and it was a really big difference being from the Southwest and moving into, you know, a Midwest environment. Um, I think it, the most shocking thing was just the lack of diversity, especially of a Native American community, um, and is just not seeing people who look like me, I guess that was the biggest thing. Um, and I tried to get involved in their Native American Student Association, but um, they also dissembled the organization because there wasn't enough student participation and they didn't submit their paperwork. So that's what I tried to do before I left, but I didn't get that done in time for them to assemble okay. again. Okay. Now, how'd you go ahead? How'd you hear about the program? Um, I heard about the program through the ARL initiative to recruit a diverse workforce, which is the same program that Mesa Alcorta and Latanya Jenkins went through, and that's how we knew one another. Um, it was in the year of 2005. So I was an ARL scholar from 2005 to 2006. And I heard about the program because we had a visit to Purdue University in April of 2006. And they told us that they were gonna be um, sending out the announcement for the residencies soon after we left. And um, 
they they sent it to they sent us the information and then I applied for the position. Okay. Um, as far as the I guess my career path prior to my appointment at Purdue, um, Purdue is my first professional job, my pro first professional librarianship job. Um, the jobs that I had before I started at Purdue, um, when I started grad school. Um, I wanted to get more library experience, which is what I didn't have in my past. So I ended up getting a job in interlibrary loan at Kent State University, where I worked for about a year. And I also picked up a second job as a reference librarian, reference assistant um, at University of Akron. Um, and then I had to quit both of those jobs my second year in grad school so that I could take a graduate assistantship, which was in um, university development. So I worked as a researcher. For a prospect okay. researcher. Okay, all right. And now you're uh, at, at Purdue. And now I'm at Purdue. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess. What else do we have on this? Yeah. Um, my I, Purdue fits into my my career goals just because as an ARL scholar, um, you know, we have an interest in working in a research library. So being able to work here at Purdue has showed me what it takes to be in a research library and the background as far as the promotion and tenure and serving on committees. Um, the only committees that I've served on while I've been at Purdue are search committees. I served on two of them, one for the business librarian at um, the Management and Economics Library and another for the public services librarian in archives and special collections. And then I served on a separate search committee for the director of the Native American Cultural Center. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the center that uh, is fairly new since you've been here for the researchers. The center opened up officially in the fall of 2000, what is it, 2007. So um, that's when it opened up. They received a building um, in January of 2008. Is that right? I'm probably getting my dates mixed up. Mm -hmm. um, but it hasn't been open for very long and it's just been established and it's in this um, small building in the South Campus, the same place where the Latino Cultural Center started out. Okay. You about your capstone then, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Um, my capstone is kind of broken up into two parts. I worked one part in oral history, trying to get the oral history of the cultural centers, and the second part was working with more instruction, instructional outreach initiatives for undergrad. And for outreach, I worked a lot with the Native American Educational and Cultural Center um, to try to figure out their um, information needs at the center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, an overview of the program, in my own words, I guess it's just the um, trying to work more with a research library and. Uh, trying to find those areas where there is an underrepresented or underserved community on campus. <clears throat> and so I think that's been the most important part of the capstone to me, is trying to go out and see where we can help more users, um, typical people who aren't using the library services. Good, okay. Um, our interaction with the advisory board, uh, we met with them two times in the times that we were here, um, just kind of telling them what the strengths of the program are and the weaknesses and the way to improve it. Um, it's always really nice to meet with them because it's, it's time for us to be able to kind of like talk about what is bothering us and what, what needs to be fixed and um, just doing that stuff, especially for future residents who are gonna be in this program. Good, good, okay. <clears throat> And attendance for professional associations. Um, I guess one of the main conferences that sticks out in my mind, I actually have two, so. <laughs> um, the first one is the Joint Conference of uh, Librarians of Color. That was just a really great conference to attend because you get to see other librarians and see what their experience is as a librarian of color. Um, the sessions are more geared towards outreach services and towards instruction for you know, um, patrons of color and just serving a diverse community. 
So I think that was a really great conference to go to. And it's also just very uplifting to see other people of color in the profession, which is something you don't really see as much when you go to normal um, ALA annual conferences. Um, and then the other conference that I really enjoyed was the um, Tribal Archives, Libraries, and Museums Conference. Um, and I did that just because I've been working with a lot of outreach for Native American Educational Cultural Center. Um, and that one was a really great conference because I got to meet other um, Native librarians and also just people working with the Native community. Okay. Was that the first time that conference had been held? Or no, it's, I can't is remember. Is it an annual? It's I mean, an annual one. Um, but I can't remember what year they're up to right now. Okay. And, and that a, one was held in Oklahoma City. Yeah. The so. size is not really huge, is it? No, it's a very small size. So you can really interact and... and yeah, it's a really good chance to network with people and... Right. a good time. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a favorite pretty tradition. Uh, I don't know if I really have one. <laughs> I, I didn't really do any pretty traditional stuff. I mean, I heard about Breakfast Club, but I didn't really ever participate, so. <laughs> um, now you know what it is. Yeah, now I know what it is. Um, I guess as far as an outstanding event in my life, that would probably be moving out to the Midwest, um, going to grad school in Ohio, and also working here in Indiana. That's just two things that I really never thought that I would do. I always thought that I would end up staying in the southwest and not moving very far because I like to be close to my family and um, my friends in that area. Okay, yeah. Um, any advice, advice that I would give to future residents is just to um, kind of dabble in many different things while you're here at Purdue and um, you know if there's something that you think that you would have never done just to to you know, get involved in that because it might be your only chance to really see what it's about and it might lead to finding out what you really want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any follow closing summaries or anything special? Um, or I guess what's next? You might want to share that. What's next? Um, well, I'm going to stay in libraries. Um, I want to stay in librarianship. I I'm trying to figure out about going into another master's program. Um, so I, th I think I'm just going to try to explore that realm. Okay. And I, I'm kind of just open to whatever comes along. Okay, good. But for closing, um, I guess I just would want to say that I, I've enjoyed my experience here at Purdue and the people that I've met and, and you know, being able to be with um, Marisa and both LaTanya. We've had a really great experience and a really great support group from both of them. Good. Thank you very much, Valerie. Thank you. For the, appreciate that. For, for the tape, this is the inaugural library uh, diversity fellow, and we're very glad that the three people were able to be interviewed today, and we thank all three of them. Thank you. <clears throat>